Today, I'm gonna to go over my favorite homeschool curriculum. I'm gonna join in with a bunch of other fun ladies. Um, I think this collab is hosted by Megan from Pennies and Salt, which I think I've mentioned her before we've joined in a collab, um, but I will have her description down in, um, I will have her link in the description down below. So you can click on hers and listen to her video, but you can also click on all the different ones that are in the whole playlist. So, um, when she said that we were gonna do homeschool favorites, I thought this looks really hard because I have kids all the way from preschool to college age now. So I've used curriculum for all the different grade levels and trying to come up with favorites and condense it to just show you a few is gonna be kind of tricky. But, um, so I'm gonna show you a few and then I'm gonna probably emphasize more of the younger grades. Um, because I don't have as many favorites when it gets to the older grades. They try to do things more independently and then my kids tend to get a little bit more picky about what things they like. They have more of their own opinions. And when they're younger, I can kind of choose a curriculum that I think fits um, and therefore I have more favorites. So if I wanna do favorites more for my older kids, I'd probably have to interview them and then have them explain to you which ones they like the best. Um, so anyway, I'm going to start with a couple that I use for preschool. I have, um, this one is a set of one, two, three, four, six books, and it is put out by Rod and Staff, and it goes through book A, B, it goes all the way through F. So C, D, E, and F, and it is by... Let's see if you can see this. Rod and Staff Publishers. And each one of the books is just building different skills. Um, so they're learning different colors and shapes. They do a lot of tracing, um, finding which one's big, which one's small, which one is different. It's just a very, very nice preschool curriculum. And it goes through all the different like hand-eye coordination stuff. So they learn how to do a lot of cutting and pasting. Okay, so the other thing about these curriculums is I think that um, the reason that I picked these ones is they are ones that I've used starting with my kids that are old, they're old and graduated all the way down through the kids that I currently have in those grade levels. So I've used them consistently year after year after year. They're not just like, one that I picked up because, oh, all the people recommended it and then I've used it for a year or two and it's still pretty new. Like, I've used that set with every single one of my kids that's come through preschool. Um, and that goes for Explode the Code as well. I start those in the early set, which is called Get Ready for the Code, Get Set for the Code, and Go for the Code, which has books A, B, and C. And each one of these, I mean, each one in the preschool set introduces all of the letters of the alphabet and then just has workbook pages to go with them. It's just very simple. The kids like it. It's, um, I don't want to say like fun, but it's easy and it's very self-explanatory. It's very repetitive. So um, as they're learning each letter, this, they're doing the same types of worksheets for each letter. So they kind of get the hang of how to use it pretty quickly. And most of my kids kind of speed through the ABC series. And then we go on to just the regular Explode the Code series. And they have, I think, eight books in the series. I think generally my kids have gone through book four or five, depending on how solid of a foundation I feel like they're getting with phonics. If they catch on really quick, then we just move on and I don't use it as much. Because this is like a supplementary curriculum. So we use... Here's where I get off and I go back and I told you I don't use all the things that like everybody recommends and I do something new, but I did jump on the bandwagon with The Good and the Beautiful, I think three years ago, and I really, really do love it. And so I hate to say <laughs> that I don't jump on fads, but we've been using those as our main curriculum for language arts and I'm using it all the way through from level K primer up through... The oldest level I have right now is high school level one. Um, and I like it at every level. High school, maybe not as much. It's um, meant to be very independent and self-directed at the high school level. And my daughter who 
is using it right now isn't as thrilled with it. Um, but I don't know if that's just her personality. It's a great curriculum and it's working for like my seventh grade, my fifth grade, the third, fourth grade levels. Like everybody is doing really well with it. So um, I think the high school level, I'm gonna wait until I've had a couple more kids use it to say whether or not it's that I don't like the high school level or if it's just the child that was using it didn't like it. Um, and it's um, something that, you know, it's laid out different. It's more like little workbook packets for the high school level. That's more detail than you want to know. Anyway, I really like the Good and the Beautiful as the core curriculum for language arts. Um, so I did jump on that bandwagon, uh, but it's not one that I've used with all of my kids. So explode the code, all of the preschool and through level five I've used with everybody. And then, Let's see, the other one that I have, these are vocabulary books, the Worldly Wise, Wordly Wise. I always say worldly and that's not right. It's like I'm dyslexic. Um, this is just good vocabulary building. It's very thorough and they give you a set of words at the beginning of the week and it gives you the definitions and then you do like five different exercises with those words and then you move on to the next one. And it's just a really good vocab curriculum to supplement your main language arts. Okay, then let's see, handwriting. I use a reason for handwriting. And this is just a nice um, scripture-based handwriting. So they do you know, about half a page each day. And then when they get to the end of the week, I think it's day four, they do a full verse that they write, obviously this is one that I've bought that I haven't been using yet, but they use, and they write the scripture on a full nice page on the back. So this is something that I like because they're having to practice the handwriting, which they need to do anyway, but then they're using and incorporating scripture within it. So I've used that with all of the kids. Okay, and the next one, I don't absolutely love the methods that they teach in this math curriculum. I don't think it's very advanced, like it's not super rigorous, but I'm a large family mom. We have nine that are school age this year. And anything that I can do that will help my kids be independent and it will help take some of the pressure off of me as the teacher, my clock is ringing, um, is good. It's good to help free up time. So. Teaching textbooks is a favorite curriculum for that. It's just very, very easy to use. It's very self-directed. You know, they just log onto the computer, their lecture comes on for about 20 minutes and then they complete their questions and it's all self-graded. The worst part about this is I didn't buy the yearly subscription online. I use the actual physical discs and sometimes those get lost, broken, scratched. That's the worst part about it. But everything else, I highly recommend. It's just, we've used it, I think all the way through algebra in high school, but I actually prefer, this is the one high school book I was gonna show you. I prefer starting in algebra, switching back over, and some of my kids have actually started this in pre-algebra. We switched over to Saxon math um, because this is more rigorous academically and I like the way it's laid out for the high schoolers. So even though I have to grade it and the kids have to read through the lectures, it's not something, I mean, ever you can buy like the dive or homeschool CDs that go with it to listen to the lectures. Um, my kids actually just preferred reading through the lessons inside the book because when you open it up, you know, it goes through all of the example problems on the inside and explains it all. So they read it and um, fortunately, my husband is a math guy, he has a math degree. So um, if they get stuck and it's like a higher level than I feel super comfortable teaching, um, which I, I don't, I mean, most of it, when I get up to advanced math like trig, then I get stuck. But all the way through at least algebra two, they can just come to me if they have questions. Um, but he can help with the more advanced stuff if we get stuck and we can't figure something out, which is awesome because then we don't have to do on the computer stuff. So for high school math, Saxon's my favorite. Um, I'm trying to think if I pulled anything else out. Let's see. For years, gosh, probably like the first 10 years that I was homeschooling, 
I told everybody that I hated this book because I did I really, really don't like this book, but I'm kind of like eating crow right now because this has become my favorite. Um, in addition to the good and the beautiful, um, I think they do a good job of giving the good and the beautiful. I think it does a good job laid out teaching phonics, but this is just a quick sit down with your kids do a 10 to 15 minute lesson every day and it's building their skills like rapidly. Um, I don't, the reason I don't like this book and I hated it for so long is if I were a five-year-old and this was stuck in front of me with like all the parent teacher words, it just feels overwhelming and I didn't like that. Um, I used one, I think it's called Alpha Phonics for many, many years because it's similar to this only the only thing the child sees on their page is the bold black that they're supposed to read. It doesn't show any of the teacher stuff. That's all in the back of the book. And so I used that for a long time, but one of my kids struggled. And um, so we picked this book back up and it has the different things that help, like uh, the little lines over, any, over the letters when you're supposed to have a long vowel sound and um, just had like the guides that really helped my child that struggled. Um, so I came back around and I've decided I do love this book. Um, it just took me a long time to realize it. So if you're teaching somebody to read and you don't wanna wait 10 years to realize that this is a good solid curriculum, <laughs> you could take my word for it. Okay, and then I think that was it that I had pulled out. Um, I was just going to show you the readers that went with the good and the beautiful for kindergarten level. Um, because if you've never seen inside of this curriculum before, it's really sweet. I mean, the name says it, right? It's good and it's beautiful. All of the stories are very sweet. Um, but the thing that I appreciate the most about this curriculum is sometimes you get into a level and it'll assume your child is level one. And then you open up the book that's supposed to correspond with it that the child reads. And it seems like the words jump around. Like it might have all short vowel sounds and then all of a sudden you're throwing in some really long word that they don't actually know. And this one just does a really good job of sticking with the words that are at the child's level. And I appreciate that a lot. So, um, so if you haven't jumped on the good and beautiful bandwagon, there's a reason everybody, it seems like, is doing that. Plus, it's very affordable. So if you are a large family and teaching a large amount of kids, um, you can pass down some of the books. Some of it you can print off and just buy the PDF, which I've done with some of the kids. But anyway, I feel like I jumped around a whole lot and rambled a whole lot. But those are just some of the ones that I've picked out um, that stand out as favorites to me. And you'll notice history and science weren't any of them. Maybe that just says something about me. I don't really like teaching history and science. We do it, but it's not my favorite. <laughs> anyway, go and look down below, find all the other moms that are telling you about their favorite curriculums and click through the play playlist. I cannot talk, it's late. I should have done this earlier in the day. So um, click through the playlist and if you found any of this helpful, click the little thumbs up and then subscribe to my channel. Okay, bye guys.